Thanks very much for that introduction. Is that working? I know I'm usually the wrong height for most microphones. Um, it seems funny to be introduced as one of the perpetrators of OAIPMH at a Link Data conference, but we'll have to uh, accept some history along the way. Um, so I'm here today to talk about the Link Data Libraries project, which is collaboration between Cornell, Harvard, and Stanford, and involves all these people who did all the good work I'm going to talk about and who are not responsible for the mistakes I'm about to make. Um, so the project is about a million dollar project between these three universities funded by the Mellon Foundation. And it's really about setting the scene, understanding the value proposition and some of the obstacles to what it means for our libraries to catalog and present information as linked data. This is gonna be a long road and we're taking some baby steps. Um, so the vision create a linked open data standard to exchange all that libraries know about the resources, where I think standard should be thought of in terms of the, the top bullet on Asuncion's slides before. What does it mean for the community to agree on vocabularies, way to do things, not standard as in one document, this is how you will do it. So, the goals. We are you know, aware of the standard picture that current library systems exist in a somewhat siloed world. Um, how do we free that? How do we enhance discovery and access by doing so? How do we leverage usage information about resources, something that libraries have typically been rather cautious about doing? How do we link libraries to things outside of libraries? Um, they exist in this much bigger world. And how do we do this in a sort of flexible way with appropriate ontologies that can capture all the data? And as part of this project, with three institutions, how do we do this across three as a model for doing it across the world of libraries? So we have a bunch of assumptions we've started working with. One is that this actually gets quite large quite quickly. Um, together, our three institutions actually have 30 million bibliographic records. Um, that's quite a few. Um, we're going to need to understand the pipeline and the technologies needed to make linked data happen. And we're going to need to understand what services we're going to build on top, which are going to be the, the value proposition to encourage people to move in this direction. So we started off with a picture of three institutions and three types of data we would think about first. Bibliographic data, these marked records that we've heard quite a lot about already, but also bibliographic data in other formats. Data about people and organizations. So our three institutions, for example, have three different profile systems for people. Um, and what can we do about usage data? We have uh, notions of circulation, citation, and the extra curation data, the usage data provided by our specialists, our librarians, as they organize the collection. So one of the things we started off with in this project was to organize a workshop um, in February of last year, uh, this year, sorry, which had about 50 people from around the world to sort of start off and assess where we're going, talk about the use cases, ontology, technology, and prototypes that we're developing, and to think about going forward. So we talked about what does it mean to curate linked data in libraries? How does that fit with existing workflows? What sort of technologies are we gonna use? How are we gonna move from these awful stringy things to uh, thingy things? Um, your eyes, oops. How are we gonna understand when we are talking about things that we're talking about the same things that other people are talking about, reconciliation of identities across systems. How are we gonna convert data from one to the other? Ooh, I am not good at hovering over this uh, mouse pad. And I can't use a PC. Um, and then, you know, what are the new uses, use cases and services we're gonna produce? This is about what's the value proposition for moving forward and who are the people who are gonna help move this forward. So we came up with some really excellent discussions at this workshop uh, from which there were a number of recommendations. One of our goals should be that others outside the library can use the data we produce. We don't want to stick with our silos. We've got to do something new, otherwise what's the, what's the value proposition moving forward? We don't really want to be talking to the rest of the world about our awesome linked data. We want to be able to talk about what can be done with our data, which happens to be easier because it's linked data. Um, the notion of all of our libraries who add value to 
information about these resources should make these local assertions so that they're discoverable in a linked fashion. And how do we use linked data to bring together dispersed but related collections? And, and a sort of understanding that there's a critical mass question here and we're nowhere near the critical mass yet, I think. But libraries must create this critical mass to be able to really take off in this direction. So one of the early outcomes of our project, and I, I guess there are links all over the slides, uh, which are also up on SlideShare, um, to the various things I'm showing, was a set of use cases. We spent quite some time early on distilling a set of use cases, grouping them, and, and then thinking about them in these groups. So we have six clusters, we called them. Uh, things about how you combine bibliographic and curation data, bibliographic and data about people and organizations, how we can leverage external data such as authority data from other sources um, or data about the relationship of entities within our system. Um, how can we leverage the deeper graph in services to end users? So we're all familiar with the search boxes and we just had some great demonstrations of taking that beyond. But how do we imagine providing interfaces to people that allow them to, without understanding what they're doing, query multiple uh, edges of the graph in one query. So I want the events related to the person who did that or such and such. Um, and then some, some demonstration use cases around what does it mean to build services across our three sites with a view to what that means taking it into the much bigger world. So as an example, um, build a virtual collection. So you can think of this as the book bag on steroids, right? Lots of library websites have collect my things together and put, put them in my book bag. But what would this mean in a linked data sense? So here's a demo we built. Um, this is a mock-up of the Cornell Library website. And imagine I've created a local collection on archery. I now go to the, the home link, do a search, find an item of interest on archery, click add it to my virtual collection on archery. And lo and behold, there it is in my archery collection. Now, of course, lots of people do this in lots of different ways already. Um, but we're at least trying to do it a linked data way so it's more extensible. So behind the scenes, the app is doing content negotiation to get the Mark XML, which is no RDF yet, converting that into the ontology we're using, and adding this item to an aggregation based on the RE ontology. Now, of course, I can go off to the Stanford website, do a search for another book I'm potentially interested in arch archery. Um, there's no close integration here, but I've got a URI at the top of the page, so I can copy that. Copy that into my collection, and now I've got this extra item from the Stanford collection in my uh, virtual collection on archery. Now, behind the scenes, the same thing went on. The app went off to the Stanford catalog, did some content negotiation, got the best it could. Again, it had to do some conversions and added it to the aggregation. Um, maybe I go to the Vivo system at Cornell. Similar, similar deal. I find an archery resource because it's Vivo, which is natively a linked data system. It has a, a good URI, which supports uh, content negotiation for RDF representations, and I can add that in the same way. So behind the scenes, the same process is working. Of course, I've now got a collection that includes things from three different sites. It's modeled as linked data and can be exposed as such, so potentially someone else could use it. A second use case was, what about tagging information resources? Um, one of the use cases we have at Cornell is that we have one big library site, we have a bunch of subject libraries. They would each like to have special information about their collections, such as I want to expose to my patrons the set of handbooks in engineering because I have expertise as the engineering librarian to give them better information about those books than they would find in the, the general catalog. As a sort of process point, we don't want to be building this information right into the heart of our catalog records. We want this as an annotation on top of these records, which can be brought out in certain contexts. Um, so in the previous demo, um, we have an idea of setting tags, but we also, for these virtual collections, want to have sort of sets of rules of how to include things that should be marked as uh, particular items. Um, so another use case was, how do we use linked data to demonstrate better discovery in ways that 
wouldn't work within the traditional string-based catalog. So we, we have a couple of demonstrations we've implemented here. Um, one is just the notion of thesis advisors. It happens that our graduate school collects the information about the thesis advisor and typically we've thrown that information away. Well, now at least we're starting to put that into our main catalog when we catalog the thesis, unfortunately still not with a URI of the advisor, but if you're doing it in quick time you can uh, do this effectively. So now we add to our Vivo, our profile system at Cornell, information about the fact that this uh, particular faculty member has, has written a book or been a thesis advisor and we can link that back to the catalog. Another use case, um, identifying related works in a way that is done with relations other than simple string similarity. So we've spent a bunch of time here working within a collection of uh, flyers about uh, early hip hop music. So we have a special collection at Cornell of about 500 flyers um, describing important concerts and events in, in the early days of hip hop. Um, events have venues, venues have more than one event, different artists. You can see this is a sort of beautiful problem for, for modeling and linked data. Um, so we spend a bunch of time playing around with this. We've used uh, our version of the BibFrame ontology to try and catalog these. Uh, notions of the relations of the works, the events, um, and the identities of the performers and other related entities. We've also linked it to data from Music Brains, which is expressed in RDF as, as Link Brains. Oop, and there's the first type I've spotted. It connects out to DB Predia. Um, which I think you can probably autocorrect for me in your minds. So immediately we try and do things like this. We get questions of how do we reconcile the different ontologies used in these systems. Music Brains uses music ontology, MO, and in BibBrain there's notions of an audio item. How do we reconcile these? So we've had to make a number of choices along the way. Um, but the result has been that it's proved quite rewarding to map large parts of our metadata into RDF using these different ontologies. And although we're seeing here a difference between the what does it mean to convert 10 million catalog records between what does it mean to hand curate 500 records for a special collection of high value, we still end up with an interoperable solution. So here we've had to do a bunch of manual pre-processing, URI lookups, but at the end we end up with a compatible RDF data set, which we hope to be able to leverage further. So, assembling our ontology. I say here assembling and not creating because we have tried not to create too much. There seem to be plenty of ontologies out there. In the United States, um, there's an effort by the Library of Congress called BibFrame, which uh, a couple of years ago put out an ontology, which I'm going to refer to as BibFrame 1, um, because I sincerely hope BibFrame 2 is coming along. <laughs> uh, the, the basic model is, is very nice, I think, and the fundamental classes are the things we want to talk about, creative works, instances, authority, well, let's say identities for... Uh, people and organizations and the notion of annotation to add things onto the record that don't want to be part of a core bibliographic record. Um, there were a number of issues with the first version of BibFrame and uh, one of our project team members, Rob Sanderson, wrote a report highlighting a number of linked data best practices um, such as clarifying and limiting the scope of a new ontology using URIs really in place of strings rather than just replicating the metadata world in, in RDF, reusing existing ontologies, vocabularies instead of inventing new ones, um, and really thinking about defining the core rather than extending out to the most peculiar edge cases in the first instance. Um, certainly in the library world, I think there's, there's going to be this very, very big change from a reliance on authorities as the key way of describing people and organizations to identities which take in the authority data. 
Um, and then within BitFrame 1, there was a sort of reinvention of the notion of annotation where I think the open annotation ontology is, is getting good traction and is a great way to go there. Uh, I'm really pleased to report that there is a revision of BibFrame likely to happen. There are a number of new proposals coming out, and I think the second version of BibFrame will be much, much more closely aligned with linked data practices. Um, however, of course, for our project, we needed to agree on something and move forward. So this is a schematic of the linked data for libraries ontology that we started using. You can see at the center we have the BibFrame work, an instance, an item. But then you can see a number of things from other ontologies. Um, so, for example, we decided to use folk, person, and organization, subclasses of agent, um, because BibFrame1's version of identities and authorities wasn't going to work for us. Um, we decided to use a more complex model based around schema event and provocation um, for modeling those parts because we wanted to explore this case of the Africa Bombata, Bombata collection. Um, where these are sort of key concepts and we wanted the more in-depth modeling. Whoops. Whoops. Ah, yes. <laughs> I'm terrible at hovering over the mouse pad with my hand, I'm afraid. Um, so one thing I mentioned is the notion of uh, trying to include usage data in the mix. You know, we have a lot of users. We have uh, faculty members. We have students. We have librarians. And they presumably know and add value. Um, We've done a few little experiments based on work called StackScore from Harvard uh, and the notion of computing some sort of anonymous number which somehow represents some sort of community usage and ask the questions, what's the best way to sort of calculate this on available data while preserving anonymity? how can we share data between institutions in ways that that might be useful? And I think probably the hardest question is, we actually want to avoid our catalog becoming a, a popularity context. We sort of, the scholarly search use case is not quite the same as the, the Google use case, I think. How do we integrate that with user experience? Um, David Weinberger described the stack score experience and trying to extend this in a really nice Chronicle of Higher Ed article a couple of years ago, a good dumb way to learn from libraries. Um, so one of the sort of first bits we did is like, well, how do we normalize the stack scores? So we got this, this number between one and 100 for everything in our catalog um, and Harvard's done the same. So if we wanted to combine them, how would we do it? So our first stab was, well, we should divide it up so the same fraction of things at each institution have the same score. Now we can argue how many that should be, but that seems a, a good first stab at uh, doing that. Um, of course, the vast majority of our items we have no usage data for at all, but there are a significant tail of things which actually do have that. Um, um, plumbing. We have to put this all together. I think usually when people show a plumbing picture, they show a large number of complexly interconnected pipes. I picked a, uh, a piece of as yet to be interconnected pipes because I think that's a little bit more representative of uh, the state of play. This picture looks very similar to the picture on the keynote. One of the things we've had to do for our work is a pipeline and transformation. Uh, our catalog's actually Mark 21, so there's obviously a, a straightforward translation into Mark XML. We then need to pre-process it. And each of the three institutions, of course, has done Mark 21 in its different ways. And we've adopted a bunch of local conventions which need to be sort of cleaned and normalized. So then we end up with a sort of more normalized Mark XML. For this project, we then used the Library of Congress BibFrame converter in an unmodified form, which gets us some BibFrame data. This is essentially disconnected, disjoint RDF. It's not, it's not linked data in any, any way, shape, or form, but it's being converted to have various structures and it's expressed in RDF. So then the guts of our conversion work is now a post-processor, which aims to sort out various ontological issues with the BibFrame ontology and map it to our, our version of that, but then also match up various identities in the data to outside identities or to tie internal identities together. So the output of the converter, you've just converted 10 million records, 
probably has different authorship information for every item and they're not connected. So, of course, we need to connect those up and we can use the internal data of authorized names to do that. Uh, we also convert a lot of strings in this data to IDs by certain rules. So, for example, the fast subject headings are expressed in our Mark 21 data, not as URIs, but as strings, so we can make them into URIs just by a set of rules. Um, we're also leveraging the OCLC computed data about works to identify works within our data and associate all the different uh, instances of those works together. And the hope is that at the end of that, we can put out something that really is a bit like linked open data. This is only part of the story. Thanks. Um, this post-processor really should be doing a whole lot more work to identify entities within our data and link them to the many data sources in the cloud. Um, we've only made limited process on this so far, but we have a, a bunch of challenges we're eager to take a stab at. Um, one, of course, is to leverage links to our own profile systems and our different universities. Our process so far has focused mainly on MARC data, but the catalogs of all our three institutions have different sorts of metadata for different records, and we would like to combine these all together. So we have you know, EAD data, we have data about audio and video in different formats. Um, I already mentioned the idea of entity resolution and the, the hope to link to as many other good data sources via common global identities as possible. One little bit of story is, of course, we've got this linked data. We're now going to need to pull it apart. Um, we spent some time playing with triple stores, and we immediately found that you take a, a well-versed developer and say, OK, let's put a few million triples in. And so he goes off and looks at the performance, and we see that, oh, Oh, that one in the light blue up top, blaze graph, that's not going to work. So let's, let's tip that out and then, oh, darn, he's working on a, a laptop and four store has a bug on Mac OX and goes bang at some point. Um, it's a surprisingly painful process still to sort of pick and there's lots of incomplete information out there. Um, but, you know, we did some initial analysis with very, very small data sets and then sort of started ingesting larger data sets, immediately finding that some systems have problems and some seem to be going on further. And it actually took quite a lot of work to get to a point where we could sit and ingest a billion triples, which is the starting point for how many triples we get from one of our catalogs. Um, and, you know, so it takes about a day on a fairly small machine. So we feel okay about this, but I guess I just wanted to emphasize that it's not at the point where you just do your Google search, how do I do this, what technology do I use? It took a little experimentation to find things that work. Um, similar experience at Stanford where instead of, uh, at Cornell we decided we would try and use open source tools because the hope is that we can provide a recipe that others can follow without having to buy something. Stanford uh, purchased an Allegro Graph license, used a much bigger machine and they had a more straightforward process, um, but still, in the end, a similar experience. It took them three days to load their catalog data. So while this is something you can do, it's repeatable, it's, it's a little painful. Um, and of course, so now we've loaded our data into a triple store, we actually then need to query it to build some sort of solar indexes for people to use that data, say, in a new black light interface, which is part of our, our work. Um, initial tests seem to it's going to take you know, a couple of weeks to build a solar index similar to our current discovery system from our data, which raises questions about how we're going to put this into production, how we're going to do incremental changes, things like that. Um, so I guess our, our experience so far is this is going to be somewhat painful but doable. So to summarize, just before I get the one-minute card, maybe. <laughs> uh, in building this uh, Tower of Babel, we had this idea of working and focusing on three types of data source. We've made a lot more progress with the bibliographic data than the other two, but we've made some progress with all three of those areas. We have an ontology, and I think probably the most valuable part of our work to build the ontology we've used for this experiment is the feedback we provided to the, the BibFrame community. Um, we've explored 
semantic editing and display using the Vitro platform for data in this ontology. And we've implemented some systems to build virtual collections uh, within the project Hydra system. It's a Ruby, Fedora, and using active triples, which I think Tom is going to talk about, or has talked about, <laughs> has talked about. Um, and based on extracting data that was combined into the triple store into a solar index, we've demonstrated a black light search across multiple instances. And all the data we produce will be done as draft dumps. Uh, I say draft dumps because the data from this project is not something we're going to be maintaining on a re regular basis. So unfortunately at the moment it's, it's sort of a snapshot for people to play with. And that's uh, well, Thank you very much.